Web well, Web Mr. Downtown Ray Mullen, you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, May 2nd, 2022, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Spider-Man No Way Home director John Watts is no longer directing Disney and Marvel's upcoming Fantastic Four film. Deadline and Entertainment Weekly confirmed Friday that Watts wants to take a short break from the superhero realm after completing the Spider-Man trilogy with Tom Holland and Zendaya. Watts is expected to rejoin Holland and Zendaya for the next entry in that franchise. Watts said on Friday, making three Spider-Man films was an incredible and life-changing experience for me. I'm eternally grateful to have been a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for seven years. I'm hopeful we can work together again. I can't wait to see the amazing vision for Fantastic Four brought to life. In a joint statement, Marvel Studio President Kevin Feig and co-president Luis Esposito thanked Watts for his efforts on the Spider-Man film, calling their collaboration a true pleasure. Fig and Dis Esposito said in a joint statement, we're looking forward to continuing our work with him to bring the Fantastic Four into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but understand and are supportive for his reasons to step away. We are optimistic that we will have the opportunity to work together again at some point down the road. Marvel first revealed that Watts would direct the third feature iteration of the Fantastic Four franchise, and the first since Disney acquired Fox, which controlled the franchise in December 2020 during a Disney investor presentation. Watts has spent much of the past decade directing and promoting his recent Spider-Man films after being hired off Cop Car, a small-budget indie thriller that premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2015. Several cast members from that 70s show have signed on to guest star on a Netflix spin-off that 90s show. Topher Grace, Mila Kunis, Aston Kutcher, Laura Pepin, and Will Valderrama will appear on the 10-episode comedy the streaming service said Saturday. The synopsis reads, Hello, Wisconsin. It's 1995, and Leah Foreman, the daughter of Eric and Donna, is visiting her grandparents for the summer, where she bonds with the new generation of Point Place kids under the watchful eye of Kitty in the stern glare of, of Red. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll never dies, it just changes clothes. The series will follow that 70s show veterans Kurt Wood Smith and Deborah Jo Roop as Red and Kitty. The new cast will include Ashley Alfred Hyde, Kaylee Haverda, Mace Cornell, Maxwell Ace Donovan, Ray Doy, and Sam Morelos. Fuller House actor John Stamos is lending his voice as the character of Iron Man Tony Stark in Season 2 of Disney Junior's animated series Marvel Spidey and His Amazing Friends. The network said in a press release, Marvel Spidey and His Amazing Friends follow the adventures of Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, and Miles Morales as they team up to defeat foes and save the day. Uh, in Season 2 of the series, a trio of young superheroes are able to call on Avenger pals Iron Man, Ant-Man, Wasp, and Reptile in addition to Hulk, Miss Marvel, and Black Panther for help when trouble rises, like when villain Electro tries to drain all of the power in the city, and the Spidey team must band together to use a new glowing web formula to turn the lights back on. The voice cast includes ben- Benjamin Valak as Peter Parker Spidey, Jakari Frazier as Miles Morales, Lily Sanfilippo as Gwen Stacy, Sean Jabroni as Ant-Man, Maya T- uh, Tuttle as Wasp, Huku Ramirez as Reptile, Jaden Klein, Tom Wilson as Sandman, and Stephanie Lemon as Electro. It's set to premiere in August, the uh, new episodes will also feature a Flesh Glow Web Glows storyline, and it also uh, includes original songs and a Globe Web's Glow Anthem sung by series songwriter composer Patrick Stum from the Fallout Boy Disney Jr. set. The CW has canceled its superhero shows Batwoman and DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Batwoman star Javasia Leslie in the Tower Row is ending with its third season. Leslie wrote on social media Friday, I was taught that words have power and they speak our life into existence. Uh, 
Well, I have spoke this role into my life and what an honor it has been to watch it play out exactly how it was meant to. Finally, this bad team is ours. Her story was made and it can never be taken. The Bad Woman Writers Room Twitter account said, Jabasia is a real life superhero, a champion for everyone and a protector of kindness. We'll always be inspired by you. At Javasia Leslie, we will always appreciate you. DC Legends of Tomorrow wrapped its seventh season in March and the show will not return for an eighth season on the network. Co-showrunner Kitsu Shimizu uh, treated Friday. Well, folks, it's been an incredible run. However, the CW has let us know that there will be no season eight of Hashtag Legends of Tomorrow. We are heartbroken, but also immensely grateful for the amazing work our cast, crew, and writers have contributed to this little show that, that could. Sh uh, Shimzu added, thank you to our fans. Your love and passion for our strange band of misfits has made every break, every script, every daily, every cut, and every mix worth of all the hard work. We see you, we love you, and you'll always have a place on the waiver rider. This, the cast includes Victor Garber, Brandon Ruth, Arthur Darville, Caddy Lotz, Franz Darme, uh, Sierra Rene, Falk Henschel, Amy Pemberton, Dominic Purcell, Went, uh, Wentworth Miller, Matt Leisher, and Macy Richards Sellers. Peacock announced uh, cast members for the series The Best Man Final Chapters on Friday. Nine actors joined the final chapters as recurring cats. Nicole Ari Parker, Ron Canada, Brandon Vixen, Victor Dixon, uh, Michael Jeanette, Yovana Pearson, Aaron Tarosky, Terrence Terrell, Tobias Trevelyan, and Eric Scott Ways will re recur on the Best Man final chapters as guest stars. Based on the films of Best Man and Best Man Holiday, the film cast members will return. Morris Chestnut, Melissa D'Souza, Ty Diggs, Regina Hall, Terrence Howard, Sana Latham, Nia Long, and Harold Pernod reprise their movie roles. The film follows a group of friends and their relationships at a wedding and a subsequent holiday season. Final chapter finds them facing midlife crisis. Uh, character descriptions indicate uh, the new character's role. Parker plays Yamara um, Amani, described as a captivating, high-profile multi-hyphenate. Canada plays Wellington, father to Howard's character Wellington. Their storyline will deal with their family business. Dixon plays Demetrius, a man from Jordan's uh, play by Long's past. Jeanette plays Dr. Temple, a Fordham University professor. Pearson plays Jasmine, uh, an employee of the resort to which the cast goes on vacation. Zorowski plays a literal agent, Stan. Terrell plays uh, tech worker Will on vacation at the resort. Trevelyan plays Jaha, a farmer who sells ingredients to chefs at a farmer's market. Ways plays Lance, uh, Chestnut's son, LJ. Peacock ordered the 10-episode limited series in February, but has not announced a premiere date yet. Peacock is also developing a series based on Universal Movies' Ted and Pitch Perfect. Pachinko will return for a second season on Apple TV+. The streaming service confirmed Friday that it renewed the drama series for season two. Apple TV Plus tweeted a sweeping tale too epic for just one season. Pachinko is based on the Min G. Lee novel of the same name. The series is created by Sue Hugh, who is also serving as a showrunner and executive producer. Pachinko follows four generations of a Korean immigrant family living in Korea, Japan, and America. The first season centers on a young Jim uh, Kim Sunja, played by King Min Ha, a Korean woman living in Japan during the Japanese colonial rule of Korea. Young Ya Ju, Soji Arei, Jim Ha, Han Ju Wo, Jen In Yi, Jang Yu Che, and Lee Min Ho also star. Hugh said in his statement, words cannot express my joy in being able to continue telling the extraordinary story of this indomitable family. It is an honor to be able to continue working with this amazing cast and crew. Pachinko premiered on Apple TV Plus in March. News of the renewal comes on the day of the show's season one finale. Reality television superstar Kim Kardashian and Saturday Night Live cast member Pete Davidson, who have been dating since last year, late last year, attended the White House Correspondents' Dinner in Washington, D.C. Saturday night. Kardashian shared several photos of her in a glittery silver gown that showed off her hourglass figure, while Davidson wore a dark suit and tie white shirt, sneakers, and sunglasses for the occasion. Kardashian, uh, caption, White House Ding Ding, the Gallery of Images, which has already gotten 5 million likes. 
Uh, comedian Trevor Noah hosted the gala among the 3,000 guests were U.S. President Joe Biden and his wife Jill and members of the media. Broadcast journalist Gail King joked during the dinner that she and actress and talk show host Drew Barrymore have been hurdled uh, uh, along the red carpet to make way for Kardashian and Davidson, dubbed by entertainment reporters as Kete. Um King recalled the incident from the moments earlier. Gail Drew move, move Kete are here. Brooke Shields, uh, Megan uh, McCain, Martha Stewart, Amy Schneider, Miranda Kerr, Francis, uh, uh, Fran Drescher, Billy Eichner, Chris Tucker, Jason Isaac, Sophia Bush, Fat Joe, Evan Mock, Kyla Pratt, and Roy Wood Jr. also attended the former gala. Although presidents traditionally attend the event, Donald Trump did not participate during his term because of his famously acrimonious relationship with no dinners were held in 2020 and 2021 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Ghostbusters icon Dan Aykroyd has separated from Bosom Buddies alum Donna Dixon, his wife of nearly four decades. In a joint statement to People.com, they said after 39 years as a couple, uh, we are now on separate live paths. We remain legally married, co-parents, co-workers, and business partners. This is our choice in loving friendship. ET Online also confirmed the split this weekend. EW.com said Ackroy and Dixon met on the set of the 1983 comedy film Dr. Detroit and exchanged wedding vows later that year. They worked together in the Twilight Zone, the movie, Spies Like Us, and The Couch Trip, and Exit to Eden, and are the parents of three adult daughters. Talk show host Andy Cohen has announced the birth of his second child, a daughter he named Lucy Evan Cohen. Cohen wrote on Twitter Friday night, I'm a girl dad. Uh, he captioned, here's Lucy, meet Lucy Eve Cohen. My heart is bursting, a photo of him holding his bundle of joy. Cohen followed up on Saturday morning, good morning indeed, wake up to the hospital with my sweet, sweet daughter, life is good, and thanks to all the love on Twitter last night, kind of restored my faith in this nasty platform. Cohen, who is openly gay, did not name the child's mother. His son, Benjamin, was born in February 2019 via surrogate. Naomi Judd, the beloved country singer and six-time Grammy Award winner, died Saturday. She was 76. Judd's death was announced by her daughters Ashley Judd and Winona Judd in a brief statement posted to social media. The statement reads, Today we sisters experience a tragedy. We lost our beautiful mother to the disease of mental illness. We are shattered. We are navigating profound grief and love that as we love her, she was loved by her public. We are in unknown territory. Judd's surprising death came just the day before she was scheduled to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame with her daughter, Winona. The mother and daughter duo, together known as the Judds, had recently announced that they had reunited as a musical group and announced a final tour with special guest Matina McBride. The Country Music Hall of Fame had written ahead of Sunday's induction ceremony that Judd's Mother Naomi and daughter Winona helped take country back to its roots in the 1980s with lean, tuneful songs influenced by traditional folk music, acoustic blues, and family harmony X. Uh, Winona was the lead singer with the husky, expressive voice who could growl with bluesy intensity or articulate heartache with tender sensitivity. Naomi provided the harmony, the wit, and the shay-shaying stage presence that engage audiences. Others scheduled to uh, be inducted with the Judds, known for uh, singing such songs as Love Can, Love Can Bri Build a Bridge, Give a Little Love and Why Not Me, include Eddie Bears, Pete Drake, and Ray Charles. Celebrities took to social media to pay respects to Naomi Judd over the weekend. Andy Cohen wrote, I love Naomi Judd among her many talents. She was just so much fun, a great storyteller, and a wonderful spirit. Judd's fellow country music star Travis Tritt wrote on Twitter, This is heartbreaking news. Naomi Judd was one of the sweetest people I've ever known. I had the honor of working with her in movies and numerous musical events. My deepest heartfelt condolences goes out to her family. Mary Morris wrote, Rest in peace, Naomi Judd. Honored to have witnessed Love Can Build a Bridge just a few short weeks ago. Rosanna Arquette wrote, I'm very sad to hear that Naomi Judd has passed away. Rest in peace, sending love and light to Ashley Winona and all who loved her. Broadway legend Ch Kristen Chinoweth 
posted on Twitter. I had the honor of meeting Naomi Judd years ago, and she was so incredibly kind, sending love and prayers to Winona, Ashley, and the whole Judd family during this time. I'll never thought she'd go. Actress uh, Kristen Johnston tweeted, I'm so sad about Naomi Judd. She was so lovely and warm and fun, but the thing I remember best was how proud she was of, of her daughters. She talked about them the whole time. My heart breaks for the family. Robert Tyler, the creator's Call Me If You Get Lost, is the number one album in the United States this week. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 charts day of Saturday is Morgan Wallen's Dangerous Double Album, number two, followed by Little Dirk's 7220 at number three. Uh, the Encanto soundtrack at number four, and Olivia Rodrigo Sour at number five. Right at the top tier are Drake's Certified Lover Boy at number six, Doja Cat's Planet Her at number seven, The Weeknd's The Highlights at number eight, Gunner This Is Forever at number nine, and Little Baby's My Turn at number ten. The anime adventure The Bad Guys is the number one movie in North America for a second weekend, earning an additional $16.1 million in receipts, box office mojo dot com announced on sunday coming in number two is sonic the hedgehog 2 with 11.4 million dollars followed by fantastic beast the secret of dumbledore number three with 8.3 million dollars the northman at number four with 6.3 million dollars and everything everywhere all at once at number five with 5.5 million dollars rounding up the top tier are the lost city at number six with 3.94 million dollars the unbearable weight of massive talent at number seven with 3.93 million dollars Memory at number 8 with $3.1 million, Father Stu at number 9 with $2.2 million, and Morbius at number 10 with $1.5 million. This weekend's top 10 movies earned about $62.3 million compared to the last weekend's take of $89.6 million when the bad guys debuted at number 1 with $24 million. And as the entertainment report for Monday, May 2nd, 2022, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. If you listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or at iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.